Coming up after your game, our opening night doubleheader continues on the ACC Network. And boy, we've got a good one in Raleigh, PNC Arena, NC State, bringing in Georgia Tech. Usually you have to wait a while, Chris Matola, <laughs> Jay Alter, but we are right into the fire ACC play right out of the gate. I love it. You know, nothing grabs the attention of your team. Nothing grabs the attention of fans like playing a conference game on opening night. And both these teams trying to make a push to that upper half of the ACC starts tonight. And when you look at the history between these two teams, especially the recent history, Chris, really tight, competitive, yeah. fun games between the Wolfpack and the Yellow Jackets. They have been. I mean, you go back to last season, it took a James Bakes dunk after that three-point shot from Torin Dorn as Jose Alvarado pushed, got himself into the lane. Look at the drop off here. And that was the game winner. NC State had a shot. I don't know how they got this thing off, but it was not to be Georgia Tech the winner. We could get anything like that one. We are in for a treat. Game number one, and you are treated to what has been one of the best, at least competitive rivalries in recent history. Even go back last 25 games, 21 of them decided by 10 points or less. Yeah, you know, and again, NC State loses Torn Dorn, their leading scorer and rebounder, but a lot of those pieces from th that team last year, both sides are back. So you got the bulk of the core for both of these teams who lived through that game back here tonight. Typically, you'd have to wait till February or March, but we get it as the opener coming up after your game. It's Georgia Tech at NC State. We welcome you to ACC Network Basketball presented by GEICO. A brand new college basketball season comes to you on a brand new network. It's NC State and Georgia Tech in all ACC battle in part two of our opening night doubleheader. And it comes to you from Raleigh where they are ready to go and so are we. Alongside Chris Patola, I'm Jay Alter. Chris, usually we make the people wait. Usually it's what? January, February, March, you get matchups like this. We're bringing it to you right off the rip. Conference play in the ACC right out of the gate. I love it. I mean, nothing gets the attention of your players, your fan base more than playing a conference game on opening night. And these are two teams trying to make that jump to the upper half of the ACC. It starts with a conference game tonight. For NC State, banged up coming into the opener. Markel Johnson, the best player on this Wolfpack team, ruled out tonight, rolled his ankle in practice four days ago. We were just told he will not be ready to go. And that is a huge loss for this NC State. Team. Well, not only is he their best player, but he's a senior and he's their point guard. He is the engine that makes them go. Uh, and not to mention, he was going to match up against Jose Alvarado, a terrific guard for Georgia Tech tonight. So it's a, this is a big time loss for NC State. With Johnson out, who steps up for the Wolfpack? Well, it's got to be Braxton Beverly. And, and let's not forget, this is a guy when Markel Johnson went down last year who stepped into that void for a stretch of games. He's not the same type of player. He's certainly not the same guy end to end, but he is capable and he is veteran. For Georgia Tech, also at the guard position, you get probably the best player you'll see on the court tonight for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, he's really a good player, Jose Alvarado. He did not shoot the ball well last year, and I think that affected some of the opinion of him. Uh, but much like Johnson, he's the engine that makes Georgia Tech go. They run a Princeton-style offense that he engineers and gets them into. I think this guy is poised for a fantastic season. So not only do you get an ACC matchup on opening night to start the college basketball season, but you get a matchup that in recent years has delivered. Last three meetings between these two teams decided by three points or less. Yeah, and last year there was one on a dunk at the buzzer by James Banks for Georgia Tech. NC State does not have Torin Dorn back. Uh, he was their leading scorer and rebounder, but both these teams have the bulk of their teams from that game last year back. And I'll tell you what, Jay, if we get a game like that, we are in for a treat. Oh, wouldn't it be something on opening night? 
And a credit to Josh Pastor. He's had a really good game plan against this NC State team as he starts year four at the helm of Georgia Tech. Finished 10th at the ACC last year. Picked to finish 12th in the preseason poll. What would be the recipe for a top half finish of the ACC? They have to be much better offensively. Uh, they did not shoot the ball well last year, particularly from three. And they were a high turnover team. And when you play that Princeton-style offense, there's going to be few possessions in the game so you got to take care of it and you got to make open shots and in order to be better this year they're going to have to do that on the other side kevin keats enters year three with the wolf pack really impressive 45 wins in his first tier two years you almost forget that he took over a team that was in need of a rebuild with how good they've looked under him in the early part of his tenure well, it's a deeper team. Now, not, not tonight. They're playing without their two best players and Markel Johnson and DJ Funderburg. But I think he likes their depth. And when you play their style, you've got to have guys off your bench who can contribute. Great crowd on hand for opening night in the ACC. We are underway in Raleigh. NC State controls the tip. And Georgia Tech starts in their, in their zone. It's a matchup zone. It kind of looks like a... I take that back. They're in a man. Showing a man-to-man -man early. Played a lot of zone. The bulk of their defense last year. And it's a zone that has stifled this NC State team in the last two meetings. Five to shoot on the opening possession. C.J. Bryce pull up, pop, offensive board. Devin Daniels, he can't cash in. And finally, Georgia Tech corrals the rebound. Here's Jose Alvarado. This entire Yellow Jackets offense runs through number 10 in goal. And Beverly matched up against him with Johnson out. That's a key matchup for NC State. Go inside. Kick out. Moses Wright thought about a three. Five to shoot. Inside to right, the Raleigh native with one on the timer. Has to get rid of it. Wasn't aware of the shot clock. But NC State, great defense on their opening possession. Last year, Georgia Tech turned the ball over on 21% of their possessions. 316th in the country. And when you're so deliberate offensively in that Princeton style, again, there's not a whole lot of possessions in a game where you could just give it away. A makeshift starting lineup for the Wolfpack tonight with Markel Johnson out with an injury and DJ Thunderbird out with the suspension. Manny Bates, the redshirt freshman, tries but can't connect. And Georgia Tech in a zone there, so it'll be interesting to see how they, they do that balance defensively. Manny Bates, a big rejection on James Banks inside. And a foul call comes after. This is what Manny Bates does. The redshirt freshman, 6'11", an outstanding shot blocker. And uh, really a dimension they have not had, and I think particularly in their pressing defense, to have that on the back end, a shot blocker like Bates, it's a big deal. How about it? The grad transfer from Lehigh opens the scoring. Pat Andre with a triple. That is some debut for Pat Andre. Kevin Keats told us yesterday he thinks he's got a better shooting team this year, and this is a big reason why. The transfer from Lehigh, going to play that forward position for them. If you remember last year, Torn Dorn, much more of a driver, a slasher, not really a perimeter shooter. Andre gives them that dimension. Shot 42% from three a year ago, but that was in the Patriot League. Now going against an ACC defense, and he drills the first shot he takes and then gets the steal on the other end. Here's Beverly at three. It's good. And that's what he does. Three quarters of his shots last year were threes. He is hunting that three-point shot, and what a block there. Manny Bates, his second rejection of the opening minutes, has brought this crowd to life with the opener. 
Now looking for Bates inside. Look out! Manny Bates on a wreck attack! Foul called, and that'll quiet this Wolfpack crowd. But talk about a great start to get your crowd into it on the opener. Manny Bates has only played a handful of games over the last two years. There's the Beverly three. And then here is up top Manny Bates. How about the start he's had? Two monster blocks defensively. And then you give him a little sugar on the other end with a nice little lob pass. And what a finish by Manny Bates. He was forced to redshirt a year ago with a shoulder injury. He missed most of his senior year in high school with that same shoulder. So it's been a long time since he stepped on a competitive basketball court. No rust at all. Georgia Tech, a slam much needed to stop the bleeding early. Well, what's interesting for NC State is they're playing without DJ Funderburk, who is suspended. And I think if you're Kevin Keats, he didn't want to have to throw Manny Bates into the fire and play a lot of minutes early. But here he is in the starting lineup. What a start. Rims out for Braxton Beverly. Georgia Tech looks to run. DeVoe thought about it. Inside, here's Banks. Dumps it off. And another rim rocker. Moses Wright, the Raleigh native. And Georgia Tech has back-to-back -back buckets after an NC State 8-0 run to start the game. Here's C.J. Bryce. Andre again for three. Can't connect, but a foul called. Andre with three foul shots. When we come back, NC State up early, eight to four. ACC Network Basketball is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Alongside Chris Patola, I'm Jalter here at PNC Arena. And the Wolfpack off to a great start, opened up on an 8-0 run. And NC State without Markel Johnson, without DJ Funderburg, arguably the two best players of this team. But it's the two guys, Manny Bates and Pat Andre, that subbed into that makeshift starting lineup. That had such a great start to this game, but now Andre heads the line for three foul shots. You know, what a story Pat Andre is, a transfer from Lehigh. He, he went into his coach at Lehigh, Brett Reed, and said he wanted to do a grad transfer a year somewhere else. He finished the transfer paperwork at 8.30 in the morning. By the end of the day, he had heard from 75 schools, and the last call of the day was from Kevin Keats and NC State. And here he is. And, you know, look, this is a team that shot 32% from three last year. They already have two made threes in this game. And Andre standing at the line shooting three free throws. And he makes all three of them. Andre off to a quick six points. What made him so desirable? Well, look, he, he does have pretty decent size. I mean, he's about 6'8". He does go about 220. But he's, he's a face-up shooter. I mean, Kevin Keats says he's as good a shooter as I've seen in a long time. I mean, he had a game at Lehigh, he made 10 threes in a game. That's how good a face-up shooter Pat Andre is. Michael DeVoe steps into a three and hits it. But NC State experimenting with the lineup early. You have Danny Dixon and Jericho Hellams who have checked into the game. Here's Hellams, a sophomore. You know, Kevin Keats saying today, last year in that game against Georgia Tech, their perimeter shot 5 of 27 from three. Against this zone, it's a 2-3 zone, you're going to get open looks. you got to knock them down. You have two really contrasting styles. Georgia Tech, who defensively plays that 2-3 zone. And then NC State tries to speed you up with that full court pressure. Rims out, second effort is good from DeVoe. Michael DeVoe played very well on Georgia Tech's trip to Spain this summer. They're expecting big things from him this year. Count it, plus the foul. It, you can't foul a face-up shooter. I mean, that's now two. They fouled Andre on the three, and then there. You're just closing out too hard. 
And that's not a guy that you have to close out. You could close out short on Jericho Helms and just two mental mistakes sending guys to the foul line. He completes the three point play. And this has been a perfect start for Kevin Keats at NC State, especially when you consider they're missing Markel Johnson. And Thunderbird. Right. I mean, you have to throw him in there. He is a big boy. He's gained about 20 pounds. When he gets back, he is going to make a major impact. And Georgia Tech is all out of sorts early in this game. Third turnover already. Josh Pastor and the Yellow Jackets, they've done well against NC State, but the recipe has been not letting the Wolfpack play their game, which has speeded up and already 16 points, a little more than five minutes into this game. Not the recipe to beat this team. This is Danny Dixon working at the post. Hook shot is good. Another grad transfer from UM Kansas City, not known for his scoring. Underneath, Evan Cole can't apply the finishing touch. Andre again. Hits it! Pat Andre already up to nine points for the Wolfpack. Now I know why 75 teams were after his signature. <laughs> well, here's the Dixon hook. And this is not what he is known for, but fundamental there. And then how about this? I mean, you got to find this guy. And to be honest, that defense wasn't bad. I mean, that, that's a hard closeout. And that's just a guy who's feeling it in his first game at NC State. The best three-point shooter to come out of the Patriot League since Chris Paul. Oh, easy there, now. <laughs> easy there. No, he is he is a superior shooter, and, and that's what he does. Now, the question, as you said earlier, that Kevin Keats has had is, can he defend at this level? Can he physically hold up as an ACC player? Inside, poked away. Devin Daniels pushes the tempo. Another three. Helms. Can't connect. Offensive board, C.J. Bryce swatted away. Alvarado trying to get Georgia Tech into it. Rattles in. Much needed three from Jose Alvarado. It's a guy did not shoot it well last year, but shot it well as a freshman. So he's capable. And he worked on it so much over the summer, as he was telling us earlier today. Now this team goes as Alvarado goes, so they need a big performance from the junior out of Brooklyn. Well, I always say the Princeton offense is not designed to get back to a layup, although that's what everybody thinks. The Princeton offense is to get slow, undersized teams jump shots. Now Georgia Tech's not slow and undersized, but that's what that offense is designed to do. It's designed to get face-up shots. Last year, Georgia Tech made 94 threes as a team. For context, Cam Johnson alone made 96. Wow. So, I mean, that's how, that's how good Cam Johnson is, but it's also how poorly Georgia Tech shot it last year. You know, Josh Pastor spoke about it. They need to be better than 30% from three to compete in the ACC. Right now, struggling with Manny Bates inside. Redshirt freshman can't get the finish. Foul called against Bates, working against the senior James Banks. It's going to be a fascinating matchup to watch over the course of the night. You have Banks, one of the best big men in the ACC, going against a kid who's making his NC State debut. Right back to Banks. Surprised they haven't gone to that matchup more banks on base. And that 
trying to get it to the senior, but overthrows Banks. Well, they just can't get into a rhythm because they, they're turning it over. I mean, they, you know, and that's just a careless, a careless turnover by Alvarado. Banks wasn't open, and that's, you know, it's leading to points on the other end. NC State five points off of these turnovers. Andre from deep. Why not? Pat Andre has come out on fire. 12 of the Wolf Packs, 24 in this game. Here's Banks working on Bates inside. Dishes it off. Asante Price. Can't knock down the three. With all due respect to the weather girls, it's not raining men here, it is raining threes. And they're coming from Pat Andre in his debut in an NC State uniform. It's raining threes. No Markel Johnson, no problem early for NC State, doubling up Georgia Tech, the star guard out with a left ankle injury, but his teammates have picked up the slack. Yes, they have. That guy in particular, Pat Andre, three of three from three. The team four of six. Braxton Beverly with that other one. I'll tell you what, it makes your offense look real good when you come out shooting the ball from the perimeter like that. The Lehigh transfer has not missed. Dishes it off there. Three threes and then three foul shots as well. Gives them 12 points. Manny Bates having quite the debut. Can't get the finish there. First half, Manny Bates is everywhere. So for two guys in their first game in a Wolfpack uniform, you could not ask for much more. Beverly on the drive. Floater is good. What a drive that was. Used the body to create the space to go up. Nice drive there by Braxton Beverly. It feels weird to say, but you wouldn't even notice NC State was missing Markel Johnson, who's been their star guy the last couple of years. Banks off the mark. Helms for three, way too much on that one from the sophomore. But Georgia Tech has struggled offensively. What can they do to get back in this game before halftime. Well, not turn it over. Again, they've got five turnovers, and that's a good start. Is hitting that roll and forcing, you know, Manny Bates in this game, forcing him to at least defend. You know, he's got the, the three blocks, as you said. He's also got an early foul. I mean, they just haven't executed. The turnovers haven't helped. They haven't really gotten anything off of their Princeton stuff. Jose Alvarado not in the game. Instead, it's Bubba Parham dishes off there. Open three for the freshman Price. Miss Byron. They've got some good looks early in this first half. The difference is NC State has knocked him down. Georgia Tech has not. And it's a 12-point Wolfpack lead. Bryce, step back. Hits it. I mean, it's everyone. Everyone has caught fire. What a move there. An individual move by C.J. Bryce on the step back. Alvarado has been in that scorer's table for some time. Georgia Tech without their leading scorer, floor general. Moses right lost the handle. Battle for the ball. And a jump ball is the call. There's this move on the other end by C.J. Bryce going to that right hand, and then he's got that step back that it seems everybody has in their game now. And he's a guy who's going to take a step, C.J. Bryce. Kevin Keats saying that he's, he's back to being a three-level scorer. He went away from that three a little bit last year when he, he just wasn't shooting it at a high percentage. 
but I think he's poised for a really good year. He's there, you know, you have to shoot around today. I think he's their loudest voice, certainly in practice. Now there's four seconds on the shot clock following the jump ball call. Georgia Tech will have the um, inbound under the rim. Need a quick look here. They go to Moses Wright. Double team gets a shot out. Second effort, not good. Right a third time goes up for it. It gets it plus the foul. How about that? Moses Wright, who went to high school six miles away from the NC State campus, finally gets it to go. That's a big front line. Moses Wright, 6'9", James Banks, 6'10". Both those guys doing work, keeping that ball alive. And as you say, Moses Wright came down with it, had a really good night in that game against NC State last year, had 18 points, was very good at the tail end of their season. And he said it was because he was home in Raleigh's league tournament with a 25-point performance against Notre Dame. A steep shot. Alvarado, touchdown at two points. What a pass by Parham to find the streaking Alvarado. They don't run a lot, but Georgia Tech will be opportunistic. Andre looking inside, ripped away. Best spell of possession for Georgia Tech so far tonight. Parham straight to the rack. Out to Alvarado for three. Too much on it. <laughs> Daniels working on Alvarado. Banks got a piece of it. Dixon fouled on his way to the rim. We'll step aside. A fun night. College basketball is back, and we're happy to bring it to you on the ACC Network. We welcome you back to ACC Network Basketball, presented by Geico. As you stayed up by 10 on the Yellow Jackets, Josh Pastor in Georgia Tech coming into the season. Some off-the-court issues to deal with. And it's tough always when you're starting a new season, new group of guys, but especially when the NCAA Committee on Infractions places your team on four years of probation, bans your team from the upcoming postseason as a result of a violation involving impermissible benefits. So now Georgia Tech in the process of appealing those as the season begins. And the good news for Yellow Jackets fans, until the appeals panel reaches a decision, all punishments won't go into effect, but an added stress on Josh Pastor and this Georgia Tech program. It is, yeah. I mean, you, you feel bad for the players. Uh, you know, they, they felt optimistic about their year to, to be able to compete in postseason play. But that's where we are now. I mean, NC State going through their own NC State, uh, NCAA stuff. So, I mean, this is, we have seen a lot of this uncovered, and we got two programs here tonight who were hit by it. Battle for the ball at the top of the court. Yeah, you mentioned it, Chris. It's been really all across the country, not just the two teams at the gym tonight. Everybody, every conference seems to be dealing with this problem. You mentioned NC State Wolfpack charged with multiple violations, including two level one most severe penalties but i think the main thing to point out is those violations came under a former head coach and mark Gottfried and center around dennis smith the players long gone from this program and a former athletic director so they have two they have a new ad who corrigan and a, and a new head coach since that stuff has come down Devin Daniels not down three. so really nobody involved currently with the program is associated with those penalties but it is something that these two teams as well as teams across the country continue to deal with and there's Jose, Jose Alvarado on attack and he's come in on a mission not happy with how he played last year certainly not happy with how his team played he is on a mission the New York guard NC State, they can't miss. C.J. Bryce connects again. And it's everybody on the Wolfpack, not just one or two guys, pouring it on at his first half. Right quickly to the other end. Scoop to the hoop for Khalid Moore. This is a tempo that this game has not been played under, typically between Josh Pastor and Kevin Keats. In years past, the Yellow Jackets have dictated the tempo. Now it's NC State with a faster pace. That rims out for Beverly. Moore trying to.
to run again. Dunks inside. Nice pass. Can't finish the three, though. And a foul called on the rebound against James Banks. Number one, number seven. That's the seventh team foul. Well, that's a big foul. I mean, that's his second, and, and he's been active. Leading shot blocker in the ACC last year was James Banks. Really alters a lot of stuff at their basket. Yeah, NC State already into the bonus, so we get foul shots with a little less than six minutes to play. Danny Dixon at the line. Misses the front end of that one and one. The fingertips of Evan Cole, another turnover. That's six against the Yellow Jackets in his first half. And that's where Georgia Tech has run a little bit more than they typically do, and I think in part because they want to beat that half-court defense down. NC State has been so good. We haven't seen the press have a whole lot of an effect in terms of turning Georgia Tech over there, but in the half-court, man, they have really gotten after Georgia Tech. But you said coming into the game, contrasting styles between these two teams, and it's been all Wolfpack in that department. Stolen away here by Georgia Tech, though. Alvarado pulls the trigger. No good. NC State off and running again. Daniels straight to the rim. Off the window for two. against NC State, Evan Cole shoved off the ball. Hellam second foul. Yeah, it's worth mentioning too with how well NC State shot it from three tonight in this half that the three point line moved back about two feet to that international line. It's uh, about 22 feet at the top of the key. It's a little bit shorter, the corner shots. Uh, but you're, you know, it'll be interesting to see. I don't think it'll affect attempts. I think teams are going to shoot it at the same rate. But it'll be interesting to see if percentages dip a little bit, at least in the early going. Now, both of these teams have played with that international line, though. Georgia Tech did it in Spain, and NC State was part of the experimental in the NIT. Shot clock violation. Great defense from the Wolfpack. That half-court defense has been so active. And they're playing with two new guys in that starting lineup in Bates and Andre. They're playing without Markel Johnson, who's so good at getting after the ball, and yet that half-court defense has been locked in in this first half for NC State. Alvarado almost got it away from Daniels. Braxton Beverly, pop off the drive, nothing but air, but kept alive on the line. It'll stay with the Wolfpack, eight to shoot. Here's C.J. Bryce muscling his way in, throws it up. C.J. Bryce, everything he has put up in the air has found its way to the bottom of the cup. <laughs> Fouled on his way to the hoop. James Banks at the foul line when we come back. C.J. Bryce started his career at UNCW with Kevin Keats, finishing it with Kevin Keats at NC State. NC State up 15 on Georgia Tech. Chris Patola, Jay Alter with you. Chris, it's a simple game. You turn the ball over, your opponent makes threes, you're going to be losing. Well, what's amazing is Georgia Tech was a top 50 defensive team last year. In this first half, NC State is shooting 51% from the field, 62% from three. 
I mean, it's been their offense. Now, their defense has been locked in, and we, we've talked about the turnovers, but there's been zero resistance from Georgia Tech on the defensive end, and I think Josh Passner's tried to figure out the zone really hasn't provided the resistance. They've gotten a more man-to-man -man in this half than they typically play, but NC State is firing on all cylinders and from a lot of different guys. Dan, this is a Wolfpack team missing their star guard, Markel Johnson, out with an ankle injury. And big man DJ Funderburg, who's indefinitely suspended. So you take out arguably the two best players on this team. Other guys step up, and they have looked really good to start this season. Daniel somehow keeps his dribble alive, denied at the rim, all the way up to Michael DeVoe. Great outlet pass, and he's fouled hard on his way to the rim. And a hard play there by Braxton Beverly, you know, not giving up a layup. You, you love the toughness from him. And, and this has been the one area where Georgia Tech's had a little bit of success offensively is getting out. And certainly looked like he hit his head there at the end of it. But a good play by Beverly to, to force the foul shots. Well, that's where DeVoe just kind of leaked out and caught the outlet pass and had the one-on-one -on -one down the down back. That's a really solid beard that Braxton Beverly is sporting. I mean, that's like that's like a six-month growth of thickage right there. I, I really love that. That is not November beard. That is more no. than five days old. That's a commitment right there. Would you ever consider growing yours out to that length? I have, Jay Alter. I have considered that. I don't know your grooming patterns. Forgive me. Maddie Bates lost it underneath. The Georgia Tech's found success in transition. Go right back to it. Blocking foul called on Braxton Beverly. That's his third. He picked up two in less than a minute. But I don't like him trying this with the two fouls. I don't mind the last one because you only got the one. And I don't like that call. I think that's a charge. I think that's a charge. So even though it's a charge, do you still not like him trying? I, I don't like my point guard taking, making that play. Right. Yeah, Especially with Markel Johnson out of the game. There's no doubt about it. Because now that's his third foul. He's going to have to sit the rest of the half. And it, it makes him a different player, at least early in the second half. But what a play it was. And I don't want to take away from the defensive play. It's the first game for the, these officials as well. So C.J. Bryce, who at times will play the four for the Wolfpack, taking the ball up with both. Beverly out of the game and Johnson out injured. A.J. Taylor, his first touch of the season, and it's a turnover. Up ahead, risky pass, somehow pays off. Banks flies in for the finish. James Banks rocks the rim. We've seen two monster dunks in his first half. The alley-oop for Manny Bates early in this first half, and then that one right there. Making like Inspector Gadget. Go, go, Gadget arms. Look at the delivery here. Running the lane and right up over the top for James Banks. Big time finish for the senior. And that got deflected a little bit. Manny Bates got a piece of that. And Banks still finishing through traffic. What a play. You're physically imposing on the court, both offensively and defensively. Coming into his senior season, Bakes an opportunity to really establish himself as one of the best big men in this conference. Right. Well, he was last year. Again, he led the league in shot blocking. He's developed an offensive game. He's been very active in this first half. Speaking of style choices, have you noticed the new officiating shirts they're sporting this year? I, I'm told it's a Raglan style shoulder. They're trying to modernize the look of the officials this year. I, I respect the hustle. I did not notice until you pointed it out, but I do like the style change. Thanks, big finish again. Did you know that it was a Raglan style? No, no, Raglan. This is, like, this is it's a Raglan style shoulder. No, I have not. I have not read up on that. I've read up on the rules changes, but not the 
officiating wardrobe changes. Yes, yes, along with the rules changes, we're trying to modernize the officials. I don't know how Jamie Lucky's taking to that. He's been around a long time, but he looks good in the new raglan style shoulder. I think that's more important than the three-point line moving out. Now James Banks has had two back-to-back -back rim rockers. Let's see if they go back to number one in gold. Can't get it to it. Ten to shoot. Price triggers a three. Too much on it. Final 90 seconds of this first half. NC State looking to add to the nine-point lead. Long rebound. Georgia Tech runs with it. DeVoe weaving his way to the rim and is fouled. Transition's been good for Georgia Tech. It's really the only way they've been able to get some consistent offense in this first half. You know, Josh Pastner telling us earlier today, there were about nine games last year that if Georgia Tech could have mustered about six or seven percentage points better at the three-point line, they would have won those games. And they were just so bad as a team shooting from three last year. And that's what that Princeton offense gets you. The Princeton offense is about getting open jump shots. That's how. That's why Pete Carrill had an undersized team, a, a slower team, a team that was good passing, good IQ. And that's what it's designed for. In today's modern game, though, you don't see a lot of it, especially in the ACC. You see derivations, you know, like the John Beeline system that has permeated through a lot of programs is a derivation. It's not... And that's what Pastor's running. It's a derivation of it. But still a lot of the same principles and a lot of open jump shots. Georgia Tech having success in transition. Not exactly their game, but they've crawled their way back into this game. Only a seven-point deficit of two foul shots upcoming. And they've kind of quietly crept back into a first half that the Wolfpack have dominated from the start. And they've gotten to the foul line. You know, NC State, in part because of their style, sent teams to the foul line at the highest rate in the league last year. And NC State offensively has gone cold. Their last made basket came at the four-minute mark, so three minutes without watching that ball go to the bottom of the net. And no doubt about it, Braxton Beverly coming out of the game with his third foul has definitely delivered a blow to the rhythm of this Wolfpack offense. Well, and Pat Andre not making threes. You know, I, th I think Georgia Tech has locked in even tighter on him, perhaps for fatigue setting in. And there's Braxton Beverly, who's got the three fouls. It's a 7 nothing Georgia Tech run trying to close out this first half strongly. <laughs> Foul on the rebound. <laughs> Both teams in the bonus. AJ Taylor at the line with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. It's amazing how coaches are putting rosters together these days. You know, NC State's got two grad transfers. AJ Taylor, a junior college player, just kind of manufacturing players from different angles. And it's it's for in a lot of cases. Freshmen are not necessarily the primary target. Or incoming freshmen, I should say. A lot of ways you can build a team, not just adding, you know, seniors in high school. Timeout taken by Georgia Tech. Nine seconds separating the shot clock and the game clock. We'll step aside. We'll pack up by seven right before halftime. NC 
NC State led it his first half as much as 16 points for Georgia Tech has clawed their way back into it less than 30 seconds until halftime. He's pushed the draw on Jay Alter. You can't point to anything offensively. The Yellow Jackets aren't really shooting the ball much better, but somehow, some way, they're back in this game and looking for more. Well, they've been better at taking care of the ball over the last five minutes of this half, and they their defense has locked in. The Braxton Beverly on the bench for NC State is held the wolf back on a drought. Trying to get back into it with some defense. A.J. Taylor on the rejection. Shot clock is off. Andre a three. No good. Follow finish. Not there. And that does it for the opening half on opening night between Georgia Tech and NC State. Coming up after the break, we take a look around the ACC. NC State, Georgia Tech on the ACC Network. Twenty minutes down, twenty to go. Halftime here between NC State and Georgia Tech. A few weeks ago at ACC Media Day, Jay Billis decided to have some fun with some of the best guys of the conference. Here, take a look. All right, let's run the fast break. Your biggest fear? Biggest fear is waking up with a spider on my face. Cause that's <laughs> just like, bro, I can't do that. Probably stuff I can't see, like a little spider, like an invisible man. I don't know. Because he could be in here right now. The invisible man could be here right now. He's not even prepared for him. My biggest fear is water. I don't know what's in there. It could be a snake and an anaconda. I don't know. It could be a crocodile. It could be a hippopotamus. What kind of car do you have? I have a old Toyota. It doesn't have exhaust, but we can ask it. What job would you least like to have? Maybe asking people questions at uh, media day. Yeah, that would be a talk about a low level job. <laughs> How about Coach K? When he gets on you, what does he say? Yo, stop playing like a robot. Okay. Hey, a robot? Be a player. Yeah, he says robot, robot. <laughs> Fun fact. If you had to do a job other than coaching, what job would you like to have? Oh, I'd be a teacher in high school. What job would you hate to have? Uh, a teacher in high school. <laughs> All right, would you rather stand on the ground or on a box? I'd rather stand on the ground. <laughs> That's a fast break. Tipping off a brand new season in the ACC when we come back at halftime. Chris Patola gives us his picks as we take a look around the league. The nightcap of our ACC network opening night doubleheader rolls on. Plenty of fun finishes at the rack in the first half. NC State leading Georgia Tech 42-35 alongside Chris Patola. I'm Jay Alter. Chris, how great. ACC Network, brand new this season. The league always competitive, but this year, the depth of the league, the stars in this league, seems like it's as good, if not better, than any year. Yeah, and the name brands, I mean, like, you know, again, at the top, you've got the, the North Carolinas, you've got the Virginias, the Louisvilles, the Dukes. Duke, a big win tonight against Kansas in that Champions Classic. Uh, I think those four teams are separated. Like, I think they're going to have Duke and Carolina certainly have the ceiling to do it. I think Virginia, Louisville bring the DNA back from last season to do it. Florida State, I think, is going to be good. Notre Dame, better. And then it's this part of the ACC. The NC States who we're seeing tonight, Syracuse, Miami got walloped tonight by Louisville. Georgia Tech, like, that's the, the area where I think the ACC was so strong last year. Can that part of the ACC be good again? With UNC, you have a pick to top in your preseason poll. Big reason why, Cole Anthony. Yeah, you know, look, he's got the highest ceiling, and I think a lot of folks love Jordan Wara, and they should. He had a double-double tonight in their win against Miami. But Cole Anthony is the most talented, and, and if he has the year anywhere close to what Kobe White had last year for Carolina, I think he's uh, got a great shot of winning player of the year. And then Tony Bennett, they're going to be good again in part because of their style. Uh, I think people are kind of with the defections to the NBA with their backcourt, uh, which was so good last season. I think people are kind of sleeping a little bit on, on Virginia. If they're as good as I think they're going to be, he's going to deserve coach of the year. Wouldn't be surprised if Kevin Keats got his name into that conversation. Wolfpack so far off to a good start. Led by 16, Georgia Tech is clawed back. We have the second half on the other side. 
You're watching ACC Network Basketball presented by GEICO. Second half about to begin. Georgia Tech and NC State. It was all Wolfpack early, but the Yellow Jackets sprung to life for the second half of that first half. Should set up for a good finish to start ACC play on opening night. He's Chris Patola. I'm Jay Alter. I NC State came out shot out of a cannon, but yeah. credit Georgia Tech, they weathered that storm, and we've got a good game headed into the second half. Yeah, I, you know, I thought the three-point shooting, it buoyed NC State's offense to start this game, and it was a big part of them jumping out to a big lead. They're five of nine from three in the first half. They didn't have a three in the last eight minutes of that half. And I think in large part, Georgia Tech turned this game around with their man-to-man -man defense. They play a lot of zone. I think Josh Pastner found something in the man. They were able to get out and transition. You know, a lot of these threes you're seeing came against that zone. There's Andre, who was big. But you'll see in the man-to-man, -man, there's the poke away, and they were off and running. And I thought that change, it got them into their break a little bit more easily and they started to find some stuff in the basket, and then they got themselves to the foul line. Uh, ended up making seven free throws in the first half. So they changed the tide, and we got ourselves a game here. A great one. First half stats. Let's take a look. Georgia Tech, they had seven turnovers about midway through that first half. They stayed at seven the rest of the half, and that really buoyed the comeback. It did. And, you know, again, it, it, they had a hard time executing their offense against that NC State half-court man-to-man defense, but when they got out and, tra and turned it over a lot, the seven times, but when they got out in transition, got some easy stuff and got themselves to the foul line. Our player spotlight tonight brought to you by Geico, and it's the Lehigh transfer. Pat Andre, first game at an NC State uniform, and he came out, made his first three threes of the night, really set the tone. He did, fresh legs. Uh, I thought he got a little bit fatigued by the uh, end of the half. Uh, and then I think Georgia Tech had a lot to do with that as well. They, they certainly locked in. Uh, but what a show it was, at least for a few minutes there to start the game. Pat Andre on Geico Player Spotlight. When you have Markel Johnson out with an ankle injury, DJ Thunderbird suspended, arguably your two best players. To get something from a guy nobody knows anything about, right from Lehigh, making his debut, it really did set the tone of this game, got the fans alive at PNC Arena. But NC State, the way they ended that half, it gives Georgia Tech a lot to be hopeful about in the next 20 minutes. I mean, NC State had eight different guys score in that half, so some of that depth, like you said, they're two best players not playing here tonight, but some of that depth really helped that offense. It'll be interesting to see Know, how Georgia Tech goes defensively. Do they stay in that man-to-man -man predominantly in this second half? Because it was a big part of, of them coming back in this game. Sounds like you would stay in it. I would, absolutely. And what it does is it, you can identify shooters. You know, again, when a team comes out and hits four quick threes and you're playing a zone, it, it, the only way to take them off that line is to match up. Braxton Beverly back on the court after three fouls of that first half. Sat the last four minutes, so that's really what got Georgia Tech back into this game. Wolfpack led by as much as 16. That lead is down to seven to start this second half. Deep inside. Can't get the finish. Kick out to Vogue. Alvarado, patient approach from Georgia Tech on their pass. Possession. And the extra pass pays off. And he had a sixth sense. He knew where Banks was and had to spin himself around in the lane in order to find them. But what a drop off that was by Jose Alvarado. Alvarado also playing with three fouls, so the two point guards have to be careful in the second half. Daniels in hesitation and a nice kiss off the glass. What a finish that was by Daniels. Really inconsistent last year, up and down all year for Devin Daniels. Hoping he can give them a little bit more offense this year. Great pass from James Banks, but off the fingertips of Khalid Moore. That's the first turnover of more than 10 minutes for Georgia Tech.
You know, especially with Markel Johnson out of this game, you cannot undersell enough Braxton Beverly's presence on the court. When he is on it, this offense has been humming. Pull up jumper. Gets his own rebound, keeps the play alive. The floater does not fall. Great hustle. Wide open, DeVoe cut away. It's as easy a bucket as you'll see all season. And just like that, Yellow Jackets have crept within five points. Bryce pull up pop. It's good. CJ Bryce. You know, one thing with no Markel Johnson and Georgia Tech playing a man to man, they're, they're not really as effective in their ball screen stuff. Nice finish there. Georgia Tech has found something in transition. The offense really starting to get going. And another great pass by Jose Alvarado to Khalid Moore. And what a finish through the contact. Jose Alvarado, Khalid Moore were AAU teammates. They're actually both guys from New York. Khalid Moore played at Malloy High School in the city, was, was teammates with Cole Anthony and Moses Brown. Cole Anthony now at North Carolina, Moses Brown now with the Portland Trailblazers. Played for an AAU team in New York, the Reds, coached by uh, a guy named Andy Borman. Moses Wright reached in on Manny Bates, his second. That AAU team, when Alvarado was on a team with Jordan Wara, who's at Louisville, Hamadou Diallo, who's in the NBA, and Jordan Tucker, who signed with Duke and then transferred to Butler. Just a really good AAU program. Of course, Alvarado from Christ the King High School, famed New York City High School. Bryce, that one rattles in and out. With Alvarado, too, that was definitely the number one guy that Josh Pastner wanted. Like the toughness, like the experience that he could bring immediately into ACC play. And he has got his offense rolling. Now Georgia Tech within three. Closest this game has been since it was 4 0 at the beginning of it. That's a fourth foul called against Jose Alvarado. And just caught in a mismatch here. CJ Rice just too small against Moses Wright, and you love the patience from Moses. That's a big foul call as Alvarado forced out of this game with his fourth foul. A lot of game left. For Georgia Tech without their floor general for the foreseeable future. Daniels trying to take advantage of it, and he does. <laughs> Down low to James Banks, denied again. Manny Bates has been terrific defensively in the post. Swatted away underneath by Moses Wright. time block the length of Moses Wright and then here James Banks has been a game changer in this defense I mean what a block that was to not commit a foul he goes straight up the verticality there the ACC's leading shot blocker last season James Banks showing why in the season opener on the road Charges the call. Jericho Helms getting himself in position. <laughs> NC State leading by five. Georgia Tech coming fast.
Georgia Tech's junior point guard, Jose Alvarado, out of the game right now with four fouls. Very rare you would see Alvarado out of the game at all in his first two years of the Yellow Jackets. 13 games where he played the entire 40 minutes. So this team not used to playing without their floor general. Seven points, but he does a lot more that doesn't even show up in the box score. When would you put him back into this game? Yeah, he's got he's got his warm-up on. Like, he's going to sit there for a little bit. I, I would... You may be able to go some offense, defense with him, but but to put him back in full-hearted, I, I don't think you do that until about seven minutes. He's too important. Because if you're NC State, you're just going to drive him. Whoever he's matched up with, you're going to drive him and force him to play defense. Banks getting the better of Bates on that matchup down low. He's Chris Padola, I'm Jay Alger. I agree. I just want to watch the score. He came out of that game when it was a three-point game, 46-43. You just don't want to let NC State separate themselves and take advantage of Alvarado on the bench too long. Here's Moses Wright working on Pat Andre. Takes him into the post. Contact and a charge is the call. He's good position defense here and, and you know Andre He's got both a tough angle there to see exactly how much contact, but I mean, he's certainly backing him in. He's got two feet on that floor in legal guarding position. The question coming into the season was not, can Pat Andre shoot? We know he can, shooting better than 40% in his career. It's can he defend at an ACC level so far tonight? How do you think he's done? I think he's been fine. He certainly hasn't been exposed. I mean, you know, his, his offense, he, he's got to be able to do something else besides shoot the basketball, especially at, at that position. But the one thing he does give them is he does stretch the floor. I mean, you have to identify him. And that's the spacing that Kevin Keats has talked about that Pat Andre gives them because of his threat to shoot it. Timeout, Georgia Tech. Wolfpack leading by five. 15 left to the second half. We've got a good one. A year ago, this matchup went down to the wire. NC State thought they got a win. Torin Doran, a three. Only six seconds left, but that's plenty of time for Georgia Tech. Alvarado, the drive. James Banks, finish, plus the foul. Georgia Tech wins that game 63-61. Alongside Chris Patola, Bob J. Alter, Yellow Jackets trailed as much as 16, but they're back within five, setting up for what could be a finish very similar to a year ago. One big difference in that game, that game was played March 6th, as DeVoe drills a three. And you don't have to wait till March, you get an opening night as these two go punch for punch, two-point game here in Raleigh. What execution out of the timeout by Georgia Tech. A screen to screener, DeVoe wide open at the top of the key. Here's C.J. Bryce. Another great block by the ACC leader, but Georgia Tech gives it away after the Banks rejection. Daniels on the drive. Banks almost got there again. They are so long at the rim. does not go. Inside to Andre. Nothing going down for the Wolfpack right now. Up to Banks. Ooh, a flush that ties this game at how 48. About how about the run from James Banks? And he ran with his hand up. What a find. This dude is playing his rear end off. Look at the communication. The nonverbal got the hand up, and he just runs the middle of the floor, rim to rim. What a game James Banks is having.
tied at 48 for the first time since it was 0-0. Georgia Tech has not led in this game trail by as much as 16. Right back in it with 13.35 to play. Braxton Beverly back in this game with the three fouls. Much needed Jericho Helms drills a three. Can't do it. Offensive rebound, taking it into a double team, but banks everything but the finish. Banks with 12 points, 10 rebounds, so a double double, and he's got four blocks as well. Moses right getting it on the block game. You said it, Chris. They are long at the rim, and they have been everywhere in the second half. Goaltend. It didn't look like it from where we're sitting. But, they, you know, and they're not just long, they, they're reactive, they're aware. And, and as, you know, they react to the position of the basketball. Great positioning, and Moses Wright cashes in. just being physically capable this is about good timing about effort about being aware those two guys have erased a lot of stuff at their basket and this is where if you're NC State you, you miss Markel Johnson because, again, they run a lot of ball screen stuff, and it's all predicated on Johnson and his ability to be creative, to get into the paint, to settle the team down. Cross-court pass by C.J. Bryce, pulls the trigger, hits it. When NC State has needed a bucket, they've turned to Bryce, and he's delivered. A two-point lead as we step aside this one's going to be a fun finish in Raleigh welcome back to NC State Georgia Tech has eight blocks in this game James Banks has five of them he's got a 7-5 wingspan but he's played hard he's been active he's been alert he's been physical he has been all over the place and it's not just the eight blocks he's got another eight that he has altered he and Moses Wright at that basket have changed this game in the second half. Big reason it's a two-point game. And along with the blocks, 14 points, 10 rebounds for the senior. He has really grown into this game. NC State, they started 14 of 27 from the floor. Since then, 5 of 24. Georgia Tech looking for their first lead of the game. Would have gone if that three fell. It did not. Here's Braxton Beverly, takes it himself, blocked, but that one, definite goal There's no question about that, but I'll tell you what, if you're Braxton Beverly, you'll think twice on that next one in lane. I mean, it's a good drive, and that's basically volleyball <laughs> off the backboard. Well, we just showed you all the blocks at Georgia Tech giving no signs that that'll end in the final 11 minutes. Everything that goes up on the inside is being contested. Give and go. And a foul is the call as Moore was getting his footing. It's a 
important to note, Jose Alvarado back in the game with the four fouls. They go inside, and Moses Wright delivers. And I think part of the reason you feel comfortable bringing him back is how well the team played without him. Andre tries a three off the mark. He started three for three from beyond the arc. He's really cooled down. That's a foul against Moses Wright. And that's the fourth against Moses Wright. So both Jose Alvarado and Moses Wright on the court with four fouls right now. We still got more than 10 minutes left in this game. Devin Daniels driving on Wright. Wright stayed aggressive with four fouls. It pays off, but very risky. And, and that could have been called. On the other end, Moses Wright ties the game back-to-back -back buckets for the Raleigh Natives. I'm surprised Josh Pasker left Moses Wright in. I mean, that could have been five right there on the other play, but it's he's riding with him, and he gives him offense on the other end. Working on Alvarado, who also reaches in. I'll tell you what, Georgia Tech staying very aggressive, and that one's going to cost him. Moses Wright, with his fifth foul, will foul out of this game. Josh Pastner is livid. Final 10 minutes of this game will be spent without the junior, Moses Wright. Here's the thing, okay? You, you're a little, you're a lot more comfortable with a guard who has four fouls playing him with 10 minutes left in this game than a big guy. Especially one like Moses Wright who only knows one speed. That's a foul. And there's no question about that. That is a foul. And we spoke to Wright yesterday, and he said he grew up six miles away from campus. He plays with more passion in this game because NC State did not recruit him, and he was in their backyard. Uh, that, that's great, Jay, but passion is one thing. When you got four fouls in a game like this, Oh, I totally one. agree and, with you. And, you know, you just can't. You got to take that guy out of the game, and then if not, Moses Wright's got to be smarter than that. So both on the player, obviously, because he did continue to play aggressive. There were two or three non-calls that could have been. But Josh Pastor has to recognize that and take him out of the game. Here's James Banks. And that's an offensive foul. That's Banks third. some flashes here tonight. You know, I think he's probably more comfortable playing at the four. He's kind of a tweener. But with Moses Wright and James Banks, they've got more at the three. Not really a shooter, but he shows you there what he does. He's so athletic. He's got good size. About 6'7". Tied at 57. Devin Daniels committed the last foul. He has four fouls now. He stays in the game as the fouls continue to stockpile. And that's number four against James Payne. So that's quickly becoming the story. And you got to take him out. I mean, you have to take him out of the game. And it looks like Josh Pastor is going to do that. Evan Cole comes in for Banks. They 
makes the front end of a one and one. that sucks the entire defense into the lane. Helms wide open, a great find, and he steps in and nails it. The sophomore has 13 points, and a foul. He's called that one by Michael DeVoe, his second. Uh, Helms has been great, 13 points, two threes. The sophomore that Coach Keats said could make a big step up from his freshman year. And remember, every foul now will send NC State to the foul line. Yeah, we'll get two. And so it looked like Josh Pastor originally told James Banks to sub back into the game, only to tell him to sit back down on the bench. Remember, Georgia Tech already without Moses Wright, another big man for the remainder of the night as he's fouled out. And free throw shooting going to be a big part of how this game is decided. Georgia Tech in the double bonus, NC State in the one and one. Alvarado lost the handle, somehow got it back. To lead more. Miss fires. And the turnovers continue to pile up. That's number 14 against Georgia Tech. Switch on the ball screen. A mismatch here. Beverly trying to take advantage. The follow in perfect position. CJ Bryce. Tech moving quickly and a foul call. NC State a six point advantage as we step aside. ACC Network Basketball presented by Geico. This game was tied at 57. And then James Banks, the senior big man, picked up his fourth foul. Moses Wright already fouled out of this game. So Georgia Tech with some decisions to make is three of their starters. One's already fouled out and two have four. Yeah. Well, and NC State in the double bonus for the, you know, the last seven and a half minutes of this game. Likewise, Georgia Tech in the one and one and if this thing gets, you know, to the point where NC State can be deliberate, you got to go right at Banks. I mean, you got to force him to play defense, see if you can draw that fifth. And James Banks has subbed into the game, so the senior playing with four fouls. And after both foul shots, we've got a four-point game. Jose Alvarado also in the game for Georgia Tech as the Yellow Jackets, who traditionally are in a 2-3 zone, have gone man the entire second half. Bryce, spin move, can't get it to drop. Risky pass. Somehow 
kept alive by Georgia Tech. Alvarado somehow gets on the other end of it. Ten seconds to shoot. They go to the junior point guard. Jose Alvarado into traffic, goes up with it, does not go down. That was a good look. That was well defended by Jericho Helms. Stayed back, stayed big, and didn't foul. Straight to the cup. Everything but the finish for Devin Daniels. Josh Pastner takes a timeout. Both teams lacking some offensive rhythm in the second half. It's remarkable that Georgia Tech is even in the game with how good the Wolfpack looked out of the gate. Built a lead of 15 in that first half. But it is a brand new ball game. Well, and part of it is this game has slowed to the pace that Georgia Tech wants. And, and I think that's... You know, it has forced, and NC State has adjusted to their credit. It has forced NC State to execute in the half court. And it, it, you know, it'll be interesting to see how the foul trouble for Banks affects their defense. Because a big part of their defense tonight in that man to man has been the rim protection for number one. Shot fake. You gotta love it. Shot fake into the shot. Nicely done by DeVoe. CJ Bryce has been the go to guy in clutch spots tonight. Up and under. He gets that to fall. He has been big, and it's that mid range. He's just been a mid range savant. Throughout this game, he gets to his spot in that mid-range. The athlete to pull up. Alvarado looking for the answer. He's got it. Jose Alvarado, a huge three. That's their fourth three on the night. They're four of 13. I've not shot it well, but a big one there from Alvarado. Bowling within one with a little more than five minutes to play. Daniels rims out. And Alvarado chases down the board. Protect on a drive there, but you've got to stay home because that's what Alvarado is going to do. Did not shoot it well last year, but as a freshman, 37% certainly capable. 15 turnovers, costly for Georgia Tech, and yet the Yellow Jackets only down by one. CJ Bryce pull up, pop connects again. That's been his shot right in that mid range. It leads the Wolfpack with 18. Here's James Banks into the post, playing with four fouls. Great move and finish. That is advanced post play right there by James Banks. Got to go back to Bryce. Leading scorer. Step back, it goes again, C.J. Bryce, unstoppable, he's got 20. Alvarado a three, off the mark. Bates couldn't 
secure the board. But got back to play some great defense. Jump ball forced by the redshirt freshman. C.J. Bryce making like MJ in this mid-range. The fadeaway delicious bottom. ACC Network Basketball is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. As we welcome you back to ACC Network Basketball, presented by Geico, alongside Chris Petrola, I am Jay Alder. The history between these two teams, the last three years, all decided by three points or less, and we are getting more of the same tonight. The bonus for the fans at home, usually you have to wait until after the new year for ACC basketball. You get it on opening night. The season starts into the ACC, the best basketball conference in the country. No surprise, it's going down to the wire. Jose Alvarado defending Braxton Beverly with four fouls. He's played with four fouls for most of this second half. C.J. Bryce, he's been the go-to guy. Leads the team with 20 points. Lost the handle, though. Great defense by Khalid Moore. And they say it was a shove on C.J. Bryce. Foul against the redshirt senior will be Georgia Tech ball. What a defensive possession by Khalid Moore. Didn't back down, stayed in front, little poke away there, and then he gets after the loose ball. And it's a 50-50 ball, and look, when, when guys go down like that, I mean, I, there's no problem with that call. But what a defensive play by Khalid Moore there. Stood his ground and induced the turnover. A one and one coming for the sophomore. Makes the front end. This kid's got a bright future, man. He's played well tonight. 6'7", a little over 200 pounds, only a sophomore. 11 points on the night, and we've got a one-point game with three minutes to play in Raleigh. Georgia Tech has never led in this game. NC State led by as much as 15. Right back to Bryce, attacks, and it rolls in. It was good defense and better offense. C.J. Bryce getting himself in the lane again. What a shot and finish. Leads the Wolf Pack with 22. Alvarado, too much pace on that ball. DeVoe tracked it down, though. Hits the three. Michael DeVoe ties this game at 73. We are seeing some shot making down the stretch in this game. Look at that one right there. I mean, well defended. And CJ Bryce with the touch in the lane and then just too much space. Hand down, man down, and Michael DeVoe. Pulling up the lefty right in the face of the defender. What a big shot that was to answer. He was impressive. He even got the ball back, kept the possession alive, but then he stepped into that three. Really, to time this game at 73. Something else for the sophomore. We imagine after this timeout, they're going back to Bryce. on the night. Started his career with Kevin Keats at UNCW. After his sophomore year where he was a first teamer at the Colonial and sat out to continue to play for Keats at NC State. Now at his fifth and final year and the lights are on for C.J. Bryce in the opener. Final two minutes and we're tied at 73. Helms into the paint, fading away and a foul is called We'll head to the line. It's a silly foul. 
by the freshman. It was just a silly foul. Make him make that shot. Fading away under two minutes in a tie ball game. Make Jericho Helms make that shot. Instead, you foul a guy who's fading away from the basket, and you give him two free throws. Rattles the first one home to put the wolf back, back up.
no punk tonight. I mean, he's a red shirt senior, grizzled veteran, former CAA player of the year. I think he has now adjusted to ACC life. I think he's poised for a monster season. This night, I think foreshadowing that, the ball's got to go to him. And, and he's, he's done a nice job with that matchup. And you assume Clint Moore will be the guy on him with his length. Clint Moore about two inches taller. Playing with four fouls. NC State cannot hold for the last shot. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Beverly on the drive. The dish. Helms. No good. Bouncing around. Seven seconds left in this game. NC State has the rebound and a jump ball. And Georgia Tech has the arrow. Neither team had a timeout. It was Pat Andre who originally had possession, but without a timeout to call, Georgia Tech got in there, got tough. And it'll be Yellow Jackets basketball with five and a half seconds remaining in regulation. Who do you draw it up for? Well, you get Alvarado's going to get the ball, much like last year, and just drive the lane and find the open player. Here he goes. Three seconds. Alvarado for the win. And we are headed to overtime in the ACC on opening night. Conference play on opening night. It is delivered to the ACC. Five more minutes on the clock. Overtime when we come back. minutes was not enough on opening night. Overtime, here we come. Tied at 75 in Raleigh alongside Chris Patrol. Bob J. Alter, NC State playing without Markel Johnson out with an ankle injury. Also, DJ Thunderbird lost the suspension. They led by as much as 15 shot out of a cannon in that first half. But credit Georgia Tech have hung tough and enforced overtime. They have, and they've done it with their two best players in foul trouble. Jose Alvarado's got four fouls. James Banks has four fouls. They're going to have to go another five minutes here with that foul trouble. Somehow we are in overtime, and Georgia Tech has not led for a second in this game. Seven ties, but no lead. And it's James Banks, the senior, who has been a monster on defense and offense. Five blocks and a double-double to go with it. Who wins the tip for Georgia Tech to get us started in overtime. The freshman trying it three and drills it. Asante Price starts overtime and gives Georgia Tech their first lead of the night. NC State is switching one through four, but when they get that one five pick and roll, it's sucking in the defense on the backside. And that's how that shooter gets wide open. Beverly off the mark trying to answer, and it's Georgia Tech basketball.
And Georgia Tech's finally able to get that switch. Uh, this is a different possession. That's that last shot there. Well, it took 40 minutes and 30 seconds, but Georgia Tech with a lead of this game for the first time tonight. Going inside. Here's Banks working on the redshirt freshman. Bates, Ooh. no good. The follow close, but does not fall. Ball on the ground after Moore poked it free. Alvarado emerges with it up to Defoe. Plenty of contact, nothing called. That was a good no call. I thought Braxton Beverly played that well, and that's not an easy play to make without fouling. And that time, a foul is called on the aggressive to lead more. His third foul. Both teams will be shooting foul shots on every foul the rest of the way. Moses Wright fouled out of this game with 10 minutes to go in the second half. They've been without the junior for a long time. Alvarado and Banks off on the court with four fouls as well. Now give Braxton Beverly a lot of credit. Without Markel Johnson, he's run the point tonight. He's been in foul trouble, but he's done a nice job. You know, leading his team, being that floor general they've needed. What is going to separate these two teams in the final three minutes of overtime? Back to the question. <laughs> Not much has separated them all night. Inside. Here's the senior banks. Dish off underneath. More points from behind by Manny Bates. We have seen three of the best shot blockers in this conference in this game two of them from georgia tech the other one manny bates only a redshirt freshman but what a job he's done five blocks on the night for bates banks goes right back to him didn't realize that the shot clock was expiring but that's a crucial mistake by georgia tech giving nc state the ball back that's two possessions where NC State's half-court man-to-man defense has stepped up. Two big stops by the Wolfpack D. Beverly right back to work. Seconds to shoot. Junior, pull up jumper. No good. Unfriendly roll. Ball is loose and a jump ball is the call. Stays with NC State. Each team did get a timeout for overtime, but they ran out of timeouts in regulation. Five seconds with the shot clock. Beverly spins into a corner and somehow it goes down to put the wolf back, back in front. Looks like Alvarado cramped up after making that play. 
And NC State had an advantage. Five on four, and a nice job by Alvarado just to read that pass by Beverly. leading scorer who's been quiet so far in overtime. Oh. And it's a travel went into the double team and could not handle it. And a nice defensive play, just kind of pulling the chair out on him as he goes into that spin. <laughs> Timeout, Georgia Tech. Josh Pastor wants to talk things over with a minute and 12 seconds left in overtime and a one point lead. When you look at the history between these two teams the last three years, all three games decided by three points or less. But to get this on the opening night of college basketball in the ACC on a brand new network, it's something special. Yeah. That's how tight it's been in, in the, the game last year, as we pointed out, came down to a dunk at the buzzer. And I, I think both, look, it's, it's game one of a long season. All right? This is a marathon, it's not a sprint. I thought both teams settled into this game. You know, NC State came out and made those threes early. I think it was intoxicating. I think it got them off to a hot start. It's not necessarily who they are. And I think both teams settled in. I think Georgia Tech's defense settled in. And now, I mean, they've really, in this overtime, gone shot for shot. And this, this is one of those plays where, again, I think Alvarado's going to have it. They're going to try to get in their ball screen stuff the matchup that they want. Over the last several minutes for Georgia Tech, who have made big time offensive plays. Georgia Tech took its first lead of the night in overtime, now trying to protect the one point advantage in the final one minute and 12 seconds. They have the basketball. It's funny, Kevin Keats, 45 wins in his first two seasons. He's beaten every ACC team except for three. Virginia, well, they've been so dominant, no, a few teams have. Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. They've been a thorn in this NC State side for the last two seasons and trying to open the season with a road win here in Raleigh. Georgia Tech has been the one team that has not succumbed to the tempo that NC State wants to play. NC State presses you, they want to run, they play at the fastest tempo in the league. Georgia Tech, they play a 2-3 zone, and they run that Princeton offense. They are very deliberate, and they have never succumbed to that NC State tempo. Both teams in the bonus. Georgia Tech now without a timeout. NC State still has theirs. of that second half with four fouls stayed in this game. He has been the go-to guy for the Yellow Jackets tonight. Reliable with the ball in his hands. Goes to work off the bank screen. DeVoe, a three. No good. And Manny Bates grabs it. It's a good look. It's a play they run a lot in this overtime. A good look. And a foul called, and that'll send C.J. Bryce to the line to try and take the lead from the free throw line. C.J. Bryce last year, 75% from the foul line, a good free throw shooter. Game one of the season, this is a big spot right here. And Bryce has not attempted a foul shot so far tonight. He does lead the Wolf back with 22 points. And we are tied at 80. 
NC State very good from the foul line tonight. 19 of 22. And Bryce gets the wolf pack the lead. Georgia Tech without a timeout. Four seconds separating the shot clock and the game clock. Alvarado looking for Banks. Ripped away by Devin Daniels. Manny Bates lost the ball. It's loose. Georgia Tech somehow has it. Ten seconds for the Yellow Jackets. Up to Alvarado. Pull up three. No good. Yellow Jackets still have it. Banks. And a foul is called with 2.1 seconds left. Devin Daniels, where are you going? You're up a point. They're going to have to foul you. And you're trying to throw it to Manny Bates, your big guy running the middle of the floor and Georgia Tech recovers and what a frenetic possession on the other end a chaotic sequence ends with James Banks the senior big man for Georgia Tech at the line with an opportunity to tie or put them in front with 2.1 seconds remaining. Kevin Keats urging his crowd into a full voice. And we're tied at 81. That was pure. And a timeout taken, the final one for Kevin Keats. With one more foul shot still to come from James Banks, an opportunity to give Georgia Tech the lead. I don't know if the ice is something that works. It never worked on me. But you got to try whatever you can with two seconds left in this game. James Banks, 68% from the foul line last year. That first shot he just took was pure. Take another look. Yeah, I mean, a great defensive play by Devin Daniels. Where are you going, though? They got a foul, and you're trying to hit your big guy running the middle of the floor. Just not a smart play. And then Georgia Tech recovers, goes the other direction. And just a crazy possession here. And, uh, Presence of mind by presence of mind to Khalid Moore to find Banks and then Banks draws the foul. Banks two for two from the foul line tonight. The game is on his shoulders. And he hits it. NC State without a timeout. Two seconds to try and steal this game from Georgia Tech into Beverly. Has to let it fly and does. No good. Georgia Tech hangs on a statement road win to start this season. What a game. What a game and what a win for Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets did not lead for a single second in regulation, but they will leave Raleigh with an overtime victory. They earned this one, got down big early, and then just chipped away, closed it at the end of the first half, and as you said, did not take the lead until overtime. And my goodness, what a job by James Banks, Jose Alvarado, Michael DeVoe. Played without Moses Wright for the last 10 minutes of this game. What a job by Georgia Tech. A year ago, James Banks won this game in this arena on a dunk with one second left. Now in overtime with two seconds left, he steps up, ice in his veins, knocks down the game-winning foul shot. And it's a Yellow Jackets victory to open up the college basketball season. The ACC Network, the nightcap of our doubleheader, and it lived up to the hype in a big way. Georgia Tech.
a dramatic victory, 82 to 81. Everybody, catch your breath. Georgia Tech survives 82-81. The Wolfpack playing without their star senior guard, Markel Johnson. Did enough, played well enough to win, but they come out on the losing side. Our final score from Raleigh, Georgia Tech 82, NC State 81. This is only game one. We've got a long way to go.